Hey everyone, this is David. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a construction site management plan using Rayon Design. We'll start with a basic floor plan and layer on information like work zones, crane locations, safety paths, and more. Using colors, symbols, and annotations, we can clearly communicate the logistics of a construction site. Whether you're coordinating deliveries, safety zones, or machinery layout, Rayon helps you streamline the process and centralize collaboration across all stakeholders. You can follow along by signing up for free and using the drawing linked in the video description. Let's dive in. After creating your free Rayon account, start in your workspace by importing a DWG or PDF of your sitemap. I'll start off by just creating this new model. So I'll go up here to the menu and import DWG. And I've already brought it over here, so I'll just select that file and open it. And you'll notice this actually opens up in a new tab. Um, and this will collapse into my model uh, once it's ready to import. So let's see, I'll just zoom in here. And this is asking me to pick a known length of by setting two points. So I'll just select these two points and that dimension is showing 12.1 meters. And again, I'll change this from feet to meters. So we should be good to go. And now see it closed out that tab and brought me back to my model. So I'll pick an insertion point. And I'll just close that. And there we go. So now we've got this imported. And, you know, I can zoom in and kind of make sure, you know, maybe I'll measure this, make sure that those are showing correctly. All that looks good. Um, and then I'm actually going to lock this. And so I'll select everything and just to make things easy, um, I'm going to group it. All right, so now I have this all as a group and I'll check my layers. Let's see, maybe I want this to be on the import layer and I'm going to go ahead and, and lock this group. So now you can see it's not even selectable, although I can still go in and, you know, snap to measurements, uh, snap for drawing and all of that, but I can't actually move or um, adjust this. But what I can also do is I can select it in the layers and I can unlock it and then it's free to move around again um, and I can go ahead and lock it again. Now that we've got our floor plan imported and locked, let's start to fill out this diagram. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna trace over these walls. So we'll go up here and we'll add a layer and we'll just call that walls. And because this is a new layer, it automatically is selected as our active layer. And so if I zoom in here and I'll select our walls tool, and you'll notice that this does still snap to uh, the edges and the corners of this wall, uh, even though that layer uh, and that block is um, locked. And so I'll go ahead and I'll start to, maybe just to show you how to do this, I'll snap to that inside corner. Um, and we can always adjust that later. All right, so we've got that one in. And I know there's a couple things we want to correct there, but I'll just draw, trace this one as well. And it looks like this one, we are matching the wall thickness. So that'll make things pretty easy. Um, but we can always adjust the other one. All right, so now we've got our two, these two areas blocked out. And because this wall thickness is incorrect, I'm going to select all of this and actually let's measure that wall, half a meter. So I'll select all of those and I'll go over here and change that to a half meter. And so that's all looking good, um, except that this wall we need to align on the other edge. And so all we have to do is drag it over and that'll stretch these two connecting walls as well. Um, and you know, this one is already good. So now what I'd like to do is uh, because this is more of a diagram, I wanna make these walls black. So once again, I'll select this batch first and I'll just go over into our properties and we can change this color to black. Um, and actually, while we're at it, since I might want to go and use this, this wall type again, I'll go and add this, this wall type as a style. Um, so maybe 
you know, this is a half meter wall. All right, and then when I click on that again, this is selected here and we can always go back and use that again. Um, and I'll do the same thing here, change this to black and we'll create a new style and we'll call that 0.3 meter wall. All right, and now when I select any of these walls, this is showing me that 0.3 meter, but I can also go and change that to the 0.5 meter. So now I have these two wall types saved as options. Um, and the next thing I wanna do, and you know, eventually we'll fill this out and all of that, but I figured these were easier shapes. Um, so we're gonna make these zones. So I'll create a zone and you can kind of see it just automatically, you know, fills that space. And I'll do the same thing here. Um, and now when we go to label these, you know, I'll call this zone uh, proposed three story office block. And then this one, maybe I'll call this proposed warehouse. All right. And it looks like, you know, that text is pretty small. So I'm gonna make this, I'll just make it a meter, nice and easy. And you can also see that here, you know, it's got the area of the space, um, but you can kind of, you can obviously see that it's showing square feet. We want this to be showing in meters. So we just, again, go to our properties and area, it's showing square feet incorrectly. So we just go to square meters. Um, and there we're all set. And, you know, maybe we'll add another layer and we'll call this zones and then we'll do another one and we'll call this text. And this way, you know, as I go through and I start to, you know, make our text, um, put the text on the right layer, we can make sure that that text is sitting above our zones. Um, and so I'll go and I'll select these two zones and I'll put those on the zones layer. And let's see, I gotta find this text. And I'm just gonna use the eyedropper. And so there it automatically took that size update that we made. And it also took the um, that change we'd made from square footage to uh, square meters. And so I'm also gonna select these two uh, text options, and I'm going to put those on the text layer. And I'm going to make these zones uh, a different hatch and a different color. So I can go over here, and right now we're showing this kind of light gray, which obviously if I move this around, we'll see different, um, you know, different colors. And I'm going to go over to the hatches, and I'll make this a pattern. And Clearly something is a little off with this. I think I want to make want to make this red. Um, clearly, you know, what we're seeing is supposed to be that kind of diagonal hatch, and that's not what we're seeing. So, you know, clearly there's the problem. Um, it's just scaled incorrectly. So if I go here and I can edit, and why don't we make this times 40? Um, and that is looking a lot better. And same thing here, you know. Maybe, maybe to start, I'll just use the eyedropper. So those now look the same, but maybe I just want to make this a different color. Um, so we'll give this kind of a, yeah, maybe we'll make this kind of a brown. And so there we can easily start to lay out these multiple, you know, different diagrams um, to show these spaces. Okay, so we've taken this a little bit further and further developed this diagram, but there's a couple of things that I still wanna show you just to, to show how to flesh out this, uh, this diagram. So first, you know, we're showing some locations of fire extinguishers. And in order to, to bring this, this diagram in, I'll just go over to our blocks library and RAN has provided thousands of blocks that we can search through. So I'll just do a search for extinguisher. And here we've got that object that we're seeing here. So obviously I could just copy and paste this throughout, um, but for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna show you how to actually bring this in. So all we have to do is drag it in. Um, and you might be thinking, oh no, it's not here. 
But one thing that sometimes might happen is something like this, an object like this might be initially designed for paper space just because it might be initially thought of as primarily being put onto a sheet of paper rather than into model. Um, and so I know that I dragged it in around here and it looks like we've got that selected. And this is why it's not showing because it's really small. So maybe I'll bump this up to four meters and that looks about right. And then I can just go ahead and drag this where it needs to be. So that staff parking looks like it probably needs a fire extinguisher. Um, and then the next thing I wanna show you is because this is a, a construction plan and we want to see, you know, how trucks are moving through the site, you know, if they're going to enter through this gate and then exit through that gate, then we need to show that path of travel. So I'll first start with just showing a polyline and I'll snap to uh, the center line of that gate and then I'll snap to the center line of that gate and then I'll have it travel through. And maybe I want this to come out and extend a bit further. All right. And right now it looks like our polyline line type was matching this. So I don't really want to do that. So I'll detach that style and, you know, I'll go here. Maybe we want this to be orange. Uh, we're already showing a, a dash here, but maybe this wants to be a little bit bigger. So I'll do a two. Um, and let's make this thick. And actually, maybe this needs to be back down a little bit as we're getting this, as everything is scaling up. All right, so that looks about right to me. And then, you know, because this is a one-way direction, let's go ahead and add some arrows. So I'll go to the arrow tool, and I'll just align here. And I just want to see that arrow head, um, which obviously that is not how we want it to look. So... We can go back into our properties and I can pick that same orange. We want to match thickness here. Um, and then here's importantly, I can change the arrow type. So I want this to be open and it's looking pretty small. So we'll make that five meters and that's looking pretty good to me. So now, you know, we can go ahead and start to copy this around and I'll just rotate about that axis. And everything is aligning and I'll just bring that out across here. So now we have a pretty clear path of travel. Um, and then the other two things that I wanna do, first back to our blocks library, I wanna show the actual truck. So I'll do a search for truck and here we've got our cargo truck. So I'll just drag that in and maybe orient it this way. Uh, and, you know, maybe I'll move that arrow. Just things are a bit clearer. And I'd rather have that line above. So I'll go here and arrange and just send it back a layer. And so there it's clear. We've got our truck showing below. The diagram is really clear. And the last thing that I really want to see is, you know, we've got a dimension here showing how wide that gate is. I want to make sure that that we've got enough room here for that truck to move through. So um, I'm going to go to our dimension tool and we'll just start with, you know, in between these two buildings. And so we'll just dimension that way. And then we've got a clear dimension there. And it looks like these two dimensions are matching in style, but Maybe I don't like that and I want to, you know, do something different. I can still go back to our uh, our properties panel. Maybe I want this to be a little bit thicker, you know, 0.2 meters. And uh, maybe I want to see this as, you know, blue dimension. Um, and if I want to change that text to be blue as well, and maybe it's just too small. So I'll make that a little bit bigger. I want to make these arrows a little bit bigger. Um, and actually, I got to do both sides. And so there, it's a little clearer. Um, and if I want, I can save this as a style type. I'll just call it dim. And then I can go over here and I can change this to be that dim style as well. 
So it's all really easy to just make everything the same and start to add out you know, more objects to this diagram. Rayon is also really useful for creating post-construction documentation or architectural drawing sets. Here's another drawing showing how that might look. And you can see this is all done with the same tools. So all of these are the zones that we were looking at before. Um, all of these desks have been brought in through Rayon's block library. Um, all of this can be put together easily through Rayon. Dimensions, annotations, everything. Once your drawing is complete, the next thing we we'll want to do is export for sharing and printing. So I've brought these title blocks in and there's plenty of these available within the libraries. Um, so I can just, you know, do a search for a title block um, or you can save your own as I have for access to all of your, all of your own projects. And next, what I want to do is create a page. And so if I go to the pages tool, all just marquee that area. And we can set this as custom, which we have here, um, and we can set the scale. Um, so I've got, you know, one to 40 as the scale. Um, if we knew exactly what we wanted, you know, we could do 24 by 36 um, or, you know, arch A, arch B, all the standard sizes. Um, but for now, we'll just go custom to keep it simple. Um, and then I'll actually do another page for the architectural plan. And so you can see up here, we've got page one and page two. And then if we go over to our pages tab, we're seeing both of these pages available. And next, what we wanna do is we wanna hit export. And now we can you know, zoom in and make sure everything is looking good. And we can export as either a PDF or a PNG. Uh, we can also change the range. So maybe I just wanna do you know, page one, um, or I want to do all. And then hitting export is as simple as that. The other thing that we can do with these pages is we can actually share a presentation. So if I go up to share, uh, then I can just go over here and publish that presentation. And here I can copy the URL and send this to my clients, then they can actually come into Rayon and view this presentation within uh, the file. And I can also just go up here to preview, and this is exactly what my customers will see. Um, and again, here I can also copy the link to share, or I can present. Rayon also provides plenty of collaboration tools. So along with that share menu, um, I can go up here and I can invite team members to access this file. Um, or as we've been looking through our block libraries, I can also publish this project as a library for both styles and blocks so that all of my teammates have access to the same, uh, the same objects, the same blocks across all of our projects. But here's where I can invite somebody as an editor and then their cursor would actually show within the same project and we could work on this together. Um, also along those lines, we can annotate. So maybe I want to, you know, highlight that truck. Um, and maybe I want to add a little comment of, you know, change this color. Um, and then my teammate could come in here, open this up, type out a response. And if, you know, they were picking up some red line, this could just be simply marked as resolved. And then that disappears. And that's how you can master construction site management plans using Rayon Design. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. We'd be happy to help. You can try it for yourself using the free template linked in the description. If this tutorial was helpful, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.